to Femme Fatale by Helen. I have Tracy Holland, a super woman, amazing. I, I just can't even believe how did I have it, like the luck of being sitting next to her. Thank you so much for being our guest, my guest. I really appre appreciate your time. Yes. And then I want you to introduce yourself. I want you to tell about, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Then I'm going to start asking you all sorts of questions. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I so appreciate you having me and what a gift it is to spend time with you on a, on a Monday. Oh, yes, it's Monday. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm a serial entrepreneur. And I would say I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid. Hmm. I mean, it was really one of those things. And, you know, I always dreamt about the business that I would own or the things that I would do. But the reality is I became an entrepreneur because I think I realized that traditional jobs where you go and work for somebody and you get a salary were not going to afford me the kind of lifestyle I ultimately wanted. Mm -hmm. But more importantly... I lived in a household with a lot of, I would say, craziness and a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I used to see the other little kids in their houses and especially, you know, birthday parties and play dates and things like that. And I would look at how their family interacted and I knew it was really different than my family. Oh, wow. And so I used to think, gosh... I wonder how I can make as much money as quickly as possible so I can get myself out of here and do my oh, life wow. my way. How old were you when you were thinking like that? Uh, probably seven. First and second. Seven years old. Yes. Wow. First okay. and second grade. Okay. Um, in second grade, I had packed my backpack and decided I was going to leave home with my girlfriend. And we... Oh, wow packed all of our belongings and everything we could put in our backpack and then I knew my mother kept a spare change coin place and uh -huh. so I went into her closet and I took all the spare coins I could take and put it in my backpack. We started to head out the door and I realized it was like six o'clock at night and I thought, where are we going to sleep? This oh is definitely, it's a late night, you okay. know, and it's dark at, early at that time and it was cold. And here I was about to walk out the door in second grade to go meet my girlfriend so we could run away together. Um, and I knew I didn't have enough money to get a hotel room. And I just thought to myself, I wonder if they would even rent me a hotel room, right? Since you're seven, seven, years, seven years old. Seven years old. Second, seven to eight. Oh, my God. So I think what I would say is being an entrepreneur is a little bit of a birthright for mm -hmm. women who want to be entrepreneurs you kind of know you want to do that which I think can be mm -hmm. actually harder than getting a job in many ways um, so I admire people who can go work for someone else and be disciplined enough to kind of fall into a practice of working for someone else I think there's something to that uh, there's I some think what you said is super powerful because I don't know how to uh, follow the direction right and that's like that's a curse right I mean yeah. if we could sometimes if you think about the amount of additional stress when you work for yourself yes because you're responsible for yes. all your employees the business the insurance the liability the payroll and that's a lot of pressure right yeah at some point there can be this really beautiful thing to knowing you have a paycheck every two weeks mm -hmm. and you have paid time off yeah. and the flexibility so yes. but we would rather to do this I don't think we have a choice yeah. I don't yeah. believe I have a choice I don't think I'm employable <laughs> I, I, I think I was employed for a couple of weeks and then as soon as someone asked me a question I'm like I quit I yes, quit I quit I quit <laughs> I was like don't ask me a question <laughs> no I liked waiting tables I, mean, I could wait tables and even mm -hmm. Though that doesn't sound that great. I mean, I love the idea of walking in, having someone else's inventory, uh -huh. taking an order, having someone make the meal, delivering it, and getting like 10 to 20 bucks just cash for the benefit of like taking uh -huh. food to someone's table. I was like, this is great. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. So, right now, what do you do? So, today. What, yes, today. What is your company? Because I know you have a makeup company, so I beauty. want you to do yeah. beauty. And then, so I want you to tell the audience about what uh, beauty I company do. you do. Have. Yeah, so I have a couple different businesses. Um, so, I own a company called Goodwill Brands. 
and Goodwill Brands invests in female entrepreneur-led consumer companies Mm -hmm. who I believe have a point of difference in terms of product or positioning and that can be in so for example I have a company called Uni Mm -hmm. that I just invested in that um, launched at Erewhon and it's a refillable hyper eco-friendly cool contemporary designed brand of beauty products Mm -hmm. and then um, I invested in a retailer that's BIPOC that's in all the JC pennies. They took over the Sephora uh, locations called 13 Loon. And um, and then I just started this Vizient business with my business partner to supply ethnic hair care and skincare to the healthcare business or healthcare market. Wow. But um, I have two brands that I'm acquiring now that are founder led, founder smart, beautiful brands. One in uh, skincare and one in vulva and vaginal care. Wow. Um, and so I find that once you know a category or a space, it's smart to, to mm-hmm. stay with what you know. But I would say where I spend the majority of my time is with potential to powerhouse and with the membership community that we have formed for female entrepreneurs called Inner Fit. Hmm. And okay. It's invite only exclusive uh, for female entrepreneurs and it's just launched maybe four weeks ago and we're accepting applicants through end of January. And it's really focused for female entrepreneurs who want to talk about wealth and creating wealth for one another. So there's a 100% commitment to wealth creation and you sign that in your code of conduct. Um, but it's also around relationship and health and purpose. Very nice. And so um, I feel like what we don't yet know is what is the power of our network mm-hmm. and even our investment ca- our investment capabilities, our deal flow, how we think about business, how we collaboratively support each other. Right. I think there's massive wealth we've left on the table as women because we don't have the golf club. We yeah. don't have, you know, this Correct. this place that men have and Correct. have had forever yeah. where they share deal flow and Correct. they share business ideas and ventures or they share information about who not to do business with. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Can I ask you a question? How did you became well first you had to value yourself as a woman so much in order to then value another woman so like i got you i'm a woman i love myself i appreciate myself and then you turn to another woman and says i got you like i'm gonna help you and mm-hmm. i value you because you're a woman mm-hmm. how did it start with you what because what's that passion from yeah um i think what i learned in my 20s my, my mother said to me at one point, good thing you're smart and good thing you're pretty um, because you have to think about which path you're going to take. Hmm. If you're going to take the smart path, you need to, to downplay the pretty part. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to take the pretty path with a good personality, you've got to downplay the smart part. And I thought to myself, why is that? Why do we have to choose? I don't get it. Um, but I was really brought up to think that being pretty was not going to be very advantageous for me, for my career, or for propelling myself forward. And I think it wasn't until being early 40s that I realized that that is really a false belief. And that belief, just to be able to embrace our femininity and our feminine power and to understand who we are as Mm -hmm. women is like to me part of the most magical part of what our where our power comes from and i don't mean power over i mean in terms of our influence yes um so i think it just struck me as i went through my 20s and 30s especially my 30s trying to fit into somebody else's idea of who i was supposed to be Mm. in order to be successful i see and how uncomfortable it is to pretend to be someone you're not Mm. and what i would love to help other women navigate is the idea of how we are put in a place of having to choose 
between being successful and having money and influence versus having a family and being able to do all of those things well. Mm -hmm. Because we've heard for a long time, you have to make a choice. Yeah, either this or that. Right? Yes, absolutely. And so when I I hear that and I think, gosh, I lived with that belief for such a Mm -hmm. long time, it didn't serve me. Mm -hmm. And so if I could inspire or have a conversation or open the dialogue about what it it does take and then some of the ways that it worked for me and I love hearing other women's stories of how it worked for them because Mm -hmm. we're not encouraged to share these things we're like hunkered down by ourselves what you said is so true because I remember that have happened to me too because as soon as I wanted to go work I was just like very fast I was tagged as a bad mom someone who abandoned their kids someone you're willing to go to work to abandon your own kids so I'm not a good person and I'm not a good mom because look at you like you chose money over your kids and it wasn't that it was it was like I want to teach my kids independent. I want to teach my kids to be free and having the power of doing what you love to do. It wasn't about abandoning them. It was about, I need to be good and I want to be a good role model for myself and for them. So it's just, it's really hard if you want to listen to the society and then Mm -hmm. figure out, am I a really good person or a bad person because I did this? You know, like, it took me a long time to realize it until I listened to myself and when I was clear with my own intention I was like okay you know what my intention was good right my intention was good right as long as I am like I'm clear with like my intention are to be a good role model then I can't let society to play all this game in my head to prove what kind of person I am totally yeah but also were you in a situation where you had financial resources outside of yourself? Meaning, if you're providing for the family, mm. uh, you know, I didn't have a financial backup plan, and my ex husband certainly wasn't going to be able to carry the financial weight of the family, right? Correct. So, when I looked at time spent versus income for the family, there was no question I was the horse to bet on. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Right? I hear you. Yeah. I had absolutely no one. It was just me, myself, and I. Me too. <laughs> and right. I was like, okay, how am I go figure it out? Right. Go figure it out. So, like, I remember the first time in my life, like, I cried for one year. And then I wiped it out and I said, goodbye, tears for the rest of my life. Just get your shit together. Right. So, like, you have to do it. You. Yeah. Exactly. And I knew the thing that was most important to me was to have children because on some level, by having children, I could repair the childhood I never had. Uh, okay. So, it, for me, that was not an option not to have kids. Mm. I think the question was, how do you have children and balance a high growth career that's extremely demanding, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the thing I think is important for women to hear is the truth is, and every woman can really relate to this, is there's never going to be a chance in which you get it all done Mm -hmm. in a day. Yeah. You'll always have way more to accomplish than you have bandwidth to do. So it becomes about how do you think about priorities and how do you resort those priorities to ensure that you're taking care of yourself, Correct. you're taking care of the kids, and you're taking care Correct. of the needs of the business. Yes. And everything always runs more slowly than you want it to. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. There's so much demand on our time as women and so much to juggle so we get left at the end of the day feeling like we didn't do it all and we yeah. blew like we didn't get it done and yeah the yeah. fact yeah, is yeah, yeah. I, I, don't still feel like that I still feel like that on daily basis I'm like right. I didn't do enough right I didn't do it and like I look at myself in the last 12 months I feel like I died yeah <laughs> but at the end of the day I'm like I didn't do what I was expecting. I did, I, like I didn't do it, and I, I had extra two hours a day that I went to bed and I slept. Like right. still, right? Mm-hmm. And so then it becomes this question of how do you resort your expectations around what it means to feel accomplished? And so I think every single day, and this is the other thing. 
I, I'm curious about your experience with this, but I also believe I used to carry this belief that when I hit this number in revenue, oh, then every all my problems would go away. Oh yeah, and then when my problems got bigger. <laughs> I know. Yeah, your problems got bigger. Yes. They are your problems. Yeah. My problem got bigger. Yes. Everyone' expectation got way more than me. My expectation was more, so it right. was like, and then as soon as. You know, there was this thing with my belief system because I was exposed. I didn't come from a, like, entrepreneur background or, like, being exposed to so many different possibilities. So I remember the first time, the first income that I imagined myself, I was like, I want to make $50,000 per month. And I thought, if I can make that, I can live a nice life. Yeah. And then... As soon as I was there, I was like, I don't know what to do with this. This doesn't make sense. And then I was right. like, I need a new set of goals. And then I realized I cannot set a goal with this is how much I want. I need to say I want this lifestyle and I need to get there. I like I cannot put the amount there. I cannot yes. set it like, oh, this is, if I reach this, like I will have a nice life. I need to imagine myself in a lifestyle. But definitely problem never got... Um, always got bigger and bigger always and it was never enough because it wasn't about that it was about the lifestyle right you know yes but then do you do visualization or imagine the lifestyle now instead of the number i own like i don't care about the numbers anymore yeah. so for me it's like like i want a lifestyle that all my manager can live a nice life yes i want a lifestyle that people around me are comfortable yeah. i want a lifestyle that i want to create change in human uh lifestyle and in society and especially for women so it's like it's not even i know it brings money but it's tied into the different purposes than being at right when i started it was tied into the money so yes. it just my goal and how I even imagine myself and what I'm visualizing, it completely changed the direction. Totally. So like, that's, you see that, that one, Oprah. Like, oh, yeah. I want to get there. <laughs> I want to be able one to... One of my favorites. One of my favorites. I want to be able to save other people that are stuck just like me. Right. But I also would tell you that's so interesting because if you're driven by fear, Right, And if your energy is coming from that white hot place of fear and you're saying, once I make this much, yeah. then I won't be afraid anymore or mm. then I'll feel more safe or maybe then I'll feel like I can relax and enjoy my life. Uh -huh. That was my aha was there was not this this correlation at all between money and safety True. or money and, and feeling certain. And money and feeling peace and joy and the bigger the zeros got the more I was like this is not I, this still isn't great what do I do yeah. <laughs> and so it took peeling all of that away yeah right yeah to say what is it that brings joy where what if what if none of this is what brings joy mm -hmm. how do I get back to this place what does that even mean joy like how do people find happiness? What does happiness oh God, mean? That you just touch to what my questions. Like, yeah. what is that happiness means to you? Yeah. Tracy, what does that happiness mean to you? Well, I mean, so today it's a very for different someone answer. That you sold half of your company for $600 million. So this is a dream for other people. So for someone in your caliber, how do you define happiness? No, so, okay. So going back, I built this business I sold half of it in 2019 to a private equity firm and then I just sold the balance of it this year. And uh, I would say while I was working for the business, um, I made a very good living. What I would say for a business owner at that level, I was blessed every month never having to really worry about how to pay for my bills or do any mm -hmm. of that. And I realized that I was waking up with gratitude that I didn't have to sweat how my kids were going to go to private school or how I was going to afford our lifestyle. But what I did is I went to bed every night and cried to think that this is the furthest away from what I would call what it seems like happiness or joy is. And so I started to have to ask the question, what is joy or mm -hmm. what is happiness? Mm -hmm. And 
I really think first and foremost, it's being really present Mm. and not worried about the past or the future. Mm -hmm. So when you can really be in the moment and talk to someone or be with your child or be on a date or just reading a book and like Mm -hmm. feel this overflow of appreciation for that moment, then I think you're really on to something. That's so powerful. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And so it's not just like, I don't believe for me, it's watching a comedy and laughing and finding the comedy funny. Mm-hmm. I think, I guess that's that's part of it, but I, I still, to me, observe, for the most part, what I would call this happy. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm not... I don't feel these like exuberant highs of happy Mm -hmm. and so I don't know if I identify with that word Mm -hmm. but I absolutely identify with the overflow of joy Mm -hmm. and the overflow of gratitude and the overflow of those precious moments where you all of a sudden I'm walking and looking at how stunning the flowers are or how beautiful the ocean looks or how gorgeous my partner is and how much I adore him you know like these glimpses of just pure content feelings of abundant gratitude wow so much wisdom right yeah Yeah. absolutely absolutely but like happy when was the last time no no. I think I just had another episode exactly talking about this I don't understand that word happy is like what is even happy I don't like, understand just it. because I'm laughing and I'm hyper and I'm like yeah. dancing or I'm just in the middle of the party is that the happiness or the happy is when I'm sitting at home by myself looking at myself in the mirror or just at the end of my day I have that content moment saying like yeah. I enjoyed what happened today. I enjoyed my coffee with you today. I enjoyed how I spent my time today with the people that I love. So, like, I ended up realizing it wasn't what I'm, like, the end of the road. It wasn't the result or, like, the maximum amount of the, like, laughter that Mm -hmm. I was achieving. It was about how I spent my minute-to-minute and then I felt really overjoyed with like this was an amazing conversation. This right. is my happiness. Right. Like I was able to create this moment to sit with you and look at your eyes. And right. Say, I'm having this conversation and I'm in this moment sitting with you. Right. Like and we will people will dream for me. People will dream to sit next to you. Oh. Like I, this is a dream for me to sitting next to you okay. and like I am in front of you. Having this conversation, I created this moment. This is valuable to me. Right. Right. I agree. And I think the trick is to live in the moment and not be so consumed about tomorrow or next week. And what's so interesting was it, I just heard this this week. uh, It was actually yesterday where the message was, And I love going to this place on Sundays called SRF, Self-Realization Fellowship. And you just, they have an hour meditation and just a talk Mm -hmm. around, and it's non-denominational. It's just the celebrate denominations of all types. But they talked yesterday about this idea of being present and what is purpose. Mm -hmm. And like, why did we even come to the planet? And he said, after your idea of getting back to source and knowing source and the second reason you came to the planet was to experience joy and have happiness and expansion and so I don't know about you but like in my hardest moments even when I've been stretched beyond Mm -hmm. what I thought was possible when I think back to those moments of being so stretched Mm -hmm. I I actually recognize that I would never be able to appreciate being in the present moment the way I am without it. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Or not being this person without those experiences. Right. Do you think you will be this? I don't You will push this hard. Let's say if you had a perfect childhood because like like people are not appreciating the hardship that they go through, the failure right. they go through. Right. Like will you push this hard if you didn't have a, a hard childhood? I don't I I can't imagine that I would have Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that I would have but I had a conversation earlier today with a friend of mine Katie Loeb 
who is the founder of DeFi Ventures, and they take entrepreneurs into prisons and they have them teach the prisoners who are in the entrepreneurial program how to become a more developed entrepreneur. Wow. And she has established this, I think, six years ago. And so I'm signed up to go in January to a all men's uh, institutional prison here in outside of Los Angeles County. And she was saying to me that one of the things that they do when they get to the prison is they put the prisoners on one side of the room and all the volunteers on the other side of the room. And it's a, a practice they call stepping to the line. Hmm. And so they ask the room, who here has been arrested on a DUI? And on the, the prisoner side, you may have 10 people step forward. On, on the visitor side, for all those who are volunteering, you may have 10 people step forward. Mm -hmm. And they ask, who here has had an altercation or gotten into a fight, a physical fight with okay. someone? And they go through this list of questions, and she said, one of the things that you realize is that about half the room on the volunteer side is stepping forward on every single question hmm. that is being stepped forward on the prisoner side. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes a question of being in the wrong place, the wrong time, the wrong skin color, the wrong mm. community mm -hmm. where you've grown up, and something impacts people in a way that we are all, all of us. I mean, I've done things that should have put me in prison. I mean, right? like, <laughs> of course, all of us. <laughs> right? But, right? We've had a glass of wine too many and, dr and driven or whatever it may be. Yeah. And I guess my point is... 100% of the prisoners she said that are in the prison have had violence in the home. So mm -hmm. have been victims of domestic violence mm -hmm. themselves or have witnessed domestic violence between their parents and their, and it has been severe, 100%. So then when you consider that, you know, it becomes wow. a question of how do we heal and how do we approach some of the trauma that's taking place in these young people before the fast forward and they end up in a prison situation because frankly it's a, it's a terrible situation for everyone right mm -hmm. um, and so I think the awareness for me is around the human aspect the empathy the compassion that each of us need to have for each other in the, ver the the journey that each of us have been on Correct. that get gets us to where we are and the learnings that we have and being an entrepreneur is a little bit like being a rogue yeah person who rides the rails correct right correct risk-taking mm -hmm. 